This video will guide you through an activity where you will completely design your own wall type in Revit. I'm not sure how many questions, if any questions, you'll have on the exam that will take you this far, but without a doubt, the deeper you learn in Revit, the more intuitive you become about its many intricacies. When you are finished with this video, save your work so I can look over it and help you identify any mistakes or misunderstandings. And the steps are as follows. All right, open your R cert file or your Revit certification file that I had you make earlier. Once you're inside the file, activate level one under floor plans in your project browser if it is not already activated. Click on the architecture tab and choose the wall tool inside of the building panel. In the type selector, you will have the most recent wall that you used. If it is not, the basic wall exterior, brick on CMU, click to open the type selector drop down menu and select that wall from the list. We're going to use this wall as a template for a wall we're going to create from scratch. Click on the Edit Type icon just below the Type Selector to open the Type Properties dialog box. In the top right portion of the box, you will see three buttons, Load, Duplicate, and Rename. Click on Duplicate to make another copy of this same wall. When the Name dialog box appears, type the name Brick on Timber Stud in the text area then click OK. This will allow us to make a new wall type without editing the original wall that is in the system. Back in the Type Properties dialog box, look in the body of the left column for Structure. Mouse to the right of Structure and click on the Edit button to open the Edit Assembly dialog box. This box contains information on all the elements that make up the wall structure. Look in the middle section called Layers. Inside this section is a table of columns and rows that identify each layer of the material in the wall. Above the table, you'll see Exterior Side in all caps, denoting that all the material on that side of the wall core are exterior materials. Below the table, you'll see Interior Side in all caps, denoting that all the material on this side of the wall core are interior materials. The table consists of five columns labeled Function, Material, Thickness, Wraps, and Structural Material. The Function column indicates the purpose of each layer. The first layer on the exterior side is Finish 1 and then in brackets 4, which in this case is Brick Common. If you click on the word finish one in brackets four and a drop down arrow appears allowing you to change the function but we won't because this is exactly what we need, need it to be for the wall we're going to build. The material column tells us what the layer is made of. As we can see the first layer is made of common brick. This can be changed to any material in the Revit library by clicking on it and then clicking on the tiny box that appears on the right side of the cell with ellipses in it. Click on it to open the Material Browser dialog box. Inside this box you can see that Brick Common is selected under the Project Material All column. You can change the material simply by clicking on another material option in the list. For instance, Click on Cherry, a few items below. Now look on the right side of the box and notice how all the attributes change. Click back on Brick Common to change the material back to the original. Below the Project Materials column is another list of Autodesk materials that do not normally show up when modifying walls, but they are available. You can click on any of those materials then on the up arrow to add it to the project material list. At the very bottom are three more icons that will allow you to open an existing library 
or create a new library of materials or create a new material or duplicate the selected material. And the last icon here allows you to open the entire asset library. On the right side and top of the material browser are more tabs which can differ depending on the material you're working in. Click on the identity tab. This is where you would record all the materials identification information such as what is it called? Where is it going to be purchased or supplied from? Who made it? What is the manufacturer's model number? How much does it cost? You can even provide a web link to the product description itself. Click on the graphics column. Here you can change the appearance of the material such as the color, the pattern, and the cut material pattern. Click on the Appearance tab. Here you can change how the material appears in its higher resolution settings. In this tab, you can actually upload photos of the material to make the rendered appearance very lifelike. Click on the Physical tab. Here is where you record all the necessary physical data for the brick. There isn't much, but some material, especially structural materials, will contain a lot of information about its strength and durability. Click on the Thermal tab. This is where all the data pertaining to the material's thermal capabilities is recorded. Thermals are important because it is what helps us keep the inside air comfortable and keeping it comfortable in an efficient manner. Make sure the original Brick Common material is selected and click OK. Now that was a lot of info and that was just the first layer. I will not take you in depth on all the layers, but keep in mind that all of them have the same or similar options. Now we're going to change the core layer. The wall's core is the most important component. It is the real reason the wall stands up and doesn't fall when the wind blows. On this wall, the core is made of 6 inch metal studs. That is not the material we want to use on an ordinary residential structure, so we'll change that. Click on the words metal stud layer and then the little box with three ellipses. Scroll down the list and select softwood lumber. Then click the OK button. Now look in the thickness column. The metal stud layer was made of 6 inch thick studs, but our softwood lumber will assume different dimensions. Click on the cell and change it to read 3.5 inches. This will ultimately change the overall thickness of the wall. Out to the right, under the structural materials column, ensure that the checkbox for this material is still checked. This will be the only true structural material in the wall. On the interior side of the core boundary is another membrane layer and finish layer. For our wall, we do not need this membrane layer. Select that row and then click the delete button below the table. Below the layers section is a section called default wrapping, which indicates how to treat wall materials at inserts such as windows and doors and wall ends. Because this wall is intended to encompass the entire exterior, we don't need to wrap it at the ends, but we'll wrap both the interior and exterior layers at inserts. So under At Inserts, click the box and select both from the menu. Now click OK. You're now ready to start laying these walls in your plans. Go ahead and draw another rectangle amid your other drawings, and we're done with this video.